dare to venture down Bizarre Boulevard, a realm of mysterious creatures and strange occurrences that defies the boundaries of reality. No matter which path you choose, remember that all roads eventually lead to this chilling and enigmatic destination. Hello and welcome to another episode of Bizarre Boulevard. Please visit our website at bizarreboulevard.com. Today we'll be discussing the very strange murder that happened in Washington, D.C. back in 2006. This case is very odd, as you will find out. A mystery so peculiar that it has not only baffled investigators and journalists, but also intrigued the general public. The DuPont Circle murder. This perplexing narrative involves a well-respected lawyer, Robert Eric Wohn, whose promising future was brutally cut short on the night of August 2, 2006. The case remains open with an abundance of unanswered questions. One question that surfaces with uncanny regularity, while not entirely based on rational evidence, pertains to the supernatural. Given the mysterious circumstances surrounding Robert's death and the inexplicable lack of blood at the crime scene, some have whimsically asked, could a vampire have been involved? DuPont Circle is an affluent neighborhood in Washington, D.C., and it was here that Robert decided to spend the night in the townhouse of his friend, Joseph Price. Price, his partner, Victor Zaborski, and their roommate, Dylan Ward, lived in the house, maintaining a polyamorous relationship. This house was the eerie setting where the unfathomable events unfolded. The details surrounding Robert's demise are as chilling as they are puzzling. The victim of a fatal stabbing, the crime scene was unusually devoid of blood, stirring the imagination and feeding into the vampire theory. Though the three inhabitants of the house were considered suspects, none were charged directly with the murder. This unresolved mystery has left a lingering sense of unease and a desperate quest for elusive answers. Beyond a typical crime narrative, the story of the DuPont Circle murder touches upon issues of social class, sexuality, and the operations of the justice system. It narrates the sorrowful story of a bright life extinguished too soon, with an unidentified perpetrator, or perhaps perpetrators, still at large. On the night of August 2, 2006, 32-year-old lawyer Robert Eric Wohn arrived at Joseph Price's townhouse. After a long day at work, he had planned to spend the night. Little did he know the following 90 minutes would encapsulate a gruesome crime that continues to confound investigators to this day. A panicked call to 911 was placed from the townhouse at 11.49 p.m., just over an hour after Robert's arrival. Zaborski, the caller, reported a break-in and mentioned Robert had been stabbed in the chest. When the police arrived, they found a scene more mystifying than explanatory. Despite sustaining three fatal chest wounds, Robert's body displayed a peculiar absence of blood. His body seemed uncannily clean, almost as if it had been washed and then redressed in a pristine white shirt. The murder weapon, a kitchen knife missing any fingerprints, lay nearby. Price, Zaborski, and Ward were unharmed, and their calm demeanor, combined with the lack of any signs of forced entry, led the police to grow suspicious. This enigma has sparked considerable speculation. The question persists. What happened in the DuPont Circle townhouse on that fateful night of August 2, 2006? Following Robert Wohn's death, the Washington, D.C. Metropolitan Police Department launched an investigation that quickly spiraled into a complex web of confusion. From the disconcertingly composed behavior of the three men to the puzzling state of the crime scene, everything served to complicate the investigation further. A significant turning point in the case occurred when it was revealed that the trio had delayed calling 911 after discovering Robert's body. Consequently, Price, Zaborski, and Ward were charged with obstruction of justice. Nevertheless, the actual perpetrator of Robert Wohn's murder remained unknown. Despite the high-profile nature of the trial and the national attention it received, the judge acquitted the three men of obstruction of justice and conspiracy charges due to insufficient evidence. The verdict left many stunned, and the murder of Robert Wohn remains a deeply unsettling, unresolved mystery. In the years following the trial, the three men retreated from public life. The case remains open with the D.C. Metropolitan Police Department as an unsolved homicide, and Robert's family continues to seek justice through a foundation set up in his memory. DuPont Circle, despite being a prestigious neighborhood of Washington, D.C., still carries the haunting legacy 
of Robert Wone's murder. The townhouse where the crime occurred stands as a grim reminder of an unsolved mystery that continues to baffle the city. Despite this unresolved mystery, the legacy of Robert Wone endures. He is remembered as a dedicated lawyer, a loving husband, and a loyal friend. The Robert E. Wone Judicial Clerkship Association was established to provide opportunities for Asian American law students, a testament to Robert's commitment to his community and profession. More than a decade after his murder, the case of DuPont Circle remains one of Washington, D.C.'s most infamous unsolved crimes. The mysterious circumstances surrounding his death, particularly the question of the strange loss of blood, continue to incite speculation. Could a creature of the night have been involved? As outlandish as it may seem, the enduring mystery leaves room for imagination. The case serves as a stark reminder of the fallibility of the justice system and the deep-seated pain that comes with unresolved crimes. As the search for answers continues, we honor Robert Wone's memory in the hope that justice may one day be served. Thank you for watching another episode of Bizarre Boulevard. And remember, no matter which path you choose, no matter how far you stray, remember, you will eventually find yourself on Bizarre Boulevard.